Hey, I'm Eric Triplett, The Pond Digger. Today I'm going to introduce you to a couple who hired a professional to build a pond for them and it turned out to be a classic case of ponds gone wrong. Let's go check out the pond, meet the couple, and hear their story. Here's our problem pond. I'm going to point out to you all the mistakes that were made in the construction process so that way you have a better understanding of way how ponds should be built so you don't have this same problem happen to you. Okay, here's our skimmer. And you know, if this was installed correctly, you wouldn't need this AstroTurf to try and hide it. It's completely out of level. It's not skimming properly and it's hard to maintain because it's on the back side of the pond. So this is gonna get put on the right side of the pond and this is just, this is terrible. This was done by a professional or so-called professional. Over here we have our waterfall filter. It's not even creating oxygen as it spills into the pond. But part of this whole problem is everything done together. The skimmer is not installed correctly, so all this debris is not getting pulled into the skimmer. The waterfall is not splashing into the pond and creating oxygen, and then you wouldn't have this type of algae if you had good oxygen into the pond. Now, this thing should be elevated, and it's completely at a level. I mean, it's at a level, it's only 18 inches wide, and it's at a level about four inches. So this is just done really poorly. We don't want our liner exposed to the sun, on this particular pond, if you would set a rock right here, it's just gonna splash into the pond. You should be able to set the stone here, but look, it just wants to fall. There's no way to, to set it up. Even if I could get these stones to line up and hide the liner, if you want to step around the pond and do something, it just wants to fall right in. So there's, there's no structure of shelves in that pond. So we're gonna correct that. That bothers me quite a bit because if this is exposed to the sun after time, it's gonna to start to become brittle and then you're gonna have a, a problem with your liner. Your pond's gonna be leaking. This pipe right here should be completely covered. I mean, the sun's gonna make this brittle. Within about four years, this is gonna crack wide open. You walk up here to work on your skimmer and this is gonna blow out. I shouldn't be able to see any of this. So we're gonna hide that as well. Um, the pond is, too shallow and that's why this fence is around the pond. I don't like it when you put a fence around the pond, you can't come up close, you can't interact with the fish. This fence was put up because the pond's too shallow, the predators are coming in and, and getting the fish and the homeowner's all upset because they lose their favorite fish, Lil. And so we're gonna make the pond deeper, get rid of this fence so you can make it to where you can come right up next to the pond. If you'll see this, this is expanding waterfall foam and this is how the liner was hidden. I mean, if you stepped on this, look at this wants to fall into the pond. Oops. Now we have a fold. Now the pond's leaking because it was done so poorly. So this is all going to have to be corrected. A pond should blend seamlessly into the landscape. This one's definitely not doing that. So we're going to have to correct all this. This is all going to get ripped out. So the installer didn't hide this liner very well. So here's another attempt by the homeowner to try and disguise the liner. It's just not doing a very good job. If the installation's done well, then this liner is not going to be showing. The homeowner tells me that the pond had a bad leak. And the installer had to come back a few times. And this was one of the attempts to fix this side. Looks like they put some kind of... Uh, Let's discover what's under here. Oh, they just got a little bit of plastic under here. A little flimsy plastic to create an edge for this liner. But once again, there's no shelf on the interior to help hide that. You know, you'd want to put a coping stone on the outside, of, on the inside of the pond like this. But the stone can't stay stacked right there. So the proper shelf wasn't created right here to put coping to hide the liner. We're going to have to correct that as well.
I really have mixed emotions about this pond because I deal with homeowners that build their own ponds and sometimes they'll make a mistake, but that's okay, we can help them through it. My real problem is this was professionally installed by a guy who said he does ponds all the time and this is the product that he delivered. It's simply unacceptable. The homeowner actually paid to have this done. My team's gonna come in here, we're gonna demo the whole thing, nothing is salvageable to us. We're gonna install a new pond and we're gonna show you how to do it right the first time. Hi, I'm Vicki. I'm Bob, this is Arthur, and we have a ponds gone wrong in our backyard, and that's putting it very mildly. I was going through the yellow pages looking at pond people that do ponds, and I found one and I made an appointment with them, and then my gardener I was showing him that I was gonna have that done, and he said, we do that. I went online because they said, hey, go ahead and pick out some equipment that you like, so I went online and ordered a special brand and had it shipped in and gave it to them, and they took over. It took them a month and a half to build the pond. They weren't quite sure what they were doing and they confessed to me that they hadn't done ponds previous before, but we've gotten so deep into it, I said, well, do you think you can do it or should I call someone? They said, no, we think we can do it. After they were done, I started noticing that there was lots of mud clumps coming around. This was before I put the fish in. I waited because they said that it needed to establish itself. That's why I was seeing clumps of mud. It was trying to stabilize. And then they came out and discovered that one of the walls was caving in. Then I was ready for fish. I put them in and there were six of them and I'll just mention a little briefly, that was my favorite, but going on with the fish. Suddenly, it was about, oh, three weeks later after that, I came out and discovered the five of my fish were missing. I didn't know if a predator possibly had gotten them and th at that time I thought a predator did. I called the gardeners out, then they built the fence around it to say that could have been predators. It came out about four days later, I heard the pond, the pump making mmm mm, sounds I couldn't describe and the, the fountain part wasn't bubbling over where the frog was and so I just, out of curiosity, climbed over the fence, lifted it up and there was five of my fish belly up. <laughs> After looking at the pond and the fish, I didn't think they were long for this world so I didn't get attached. I knew, <laughs> I knew better. You don't know where to go to, you don't know anyone. You don't know one that's had a pond put in because my other one, my son did, an eighth grader, and it came out great. He built that first one that was nice, the water was clear, everything worked properly, and... The fish never died. It never turned out looking like that one did. That one looked like, I don't know, a hazmat spill to me. Dirt behind the wall, see how it can come up to about here? Yeah. So we can, we can lose a lot of dirt back here. Okay. Waterfall here. We'll dig it down like maybe about that, right? Raise that dirt up over there. So we have to take some more sod out there, like to the sprinkler, take it out right there, and then, then you have to do like a burn shot there and taper it away. I got the crew all lined out. I'm going to let them be to work their own magic. I'm going to go check on a couple other projects I got on the books. And tomorrow, we should be finished if we don't run into any surprises. Once it's completed, we'll come back and we'll see the reaction from the homeowners and we'll show you the changes that we've made to the new pond.